So lately I watched this video by White Sea Studio called Oversampling is not that easy. And in this video he interviews this developer who knows a lot about how to implement oversampling for real in a plugin. And I also implemented oversampling so I just felt like I watched this and maybe I found out something new about oversampling or just a different perspective that is kind of interesting. And there is one thing in particular that caught my interest which was one of the sections of the video in which they talk about how oversampling can be made of different filters. If you need to oversample on something that's going to be used for tracking, you don't have a choice. You have to make sure that it works well for latency. Because if it doesn't, some people simply cannot or won't use it. And so then that means you're going to have to make sacrifices in one of the other two. If you want to make the highest quality thing possible, oftentimes you're able to make decisions that maximize the quality and processing power. The other thing is that when you're oversampling, there's different techniques to oversample and they'll have different effects on the signal. The biggest thing is when we're getting rid of aliasing, we have to apply filters. And the type of filtering solution you pick and the characteristics that you give it are going to change how it shapes the sound. It may cause problems in some situations. Now you can't know, the developers aren't gonna tell you, I use this algorithm for my oversampling or this filter characteristic and they never allow you to select that they yeah. only allow you to select the oversampling factor because it's just so much stuff you know it's two four eight sixteen that's what you get it's not i want a brick wall versus a shallow filter or i want to use infinite impulse response filter versus a finite impulse response filter and yeah. so this is kind of funny i mean usually i would say he's right they don't give you this control but just yesterday I tried to make a video about a plugin that does have this control and I tried to make it look like that definitely solves a specific problem. I had to stop making this video because it didn't turn out the way I wanted it to. And when I saw this video, I immediately noticed why. So I will make my video about that now. I basically made this project called Clipper Oversampling Modes because I wanted to show how much it matters when a clipper has oversampling modes to choose from. I basically created this test scenario where there is this kick and it consists of this kick and this one. Yeah, I basically thought like I have one kick that is punchy and one kick that is more like boomy and when they are combined it's a nice sound but if there were like phase issues or anything like that being added to it, then the sound might change and that might hurt the sound. And since we know that oversampling has filters in it, we might be interested to use nonlinear effects with oversampling filters that actually fit this situation. So I wanted to make a video about Ven Audio V Clip, which is a really great clipper plugin with lots of different clipper shapes. A side feature that it has that is often overlooked is that when you go to the oversample section, you cannot just turn up the factor to whatever crazy number is going on. Like what, what, why would I use 256 X oversampling? Four X is more than enough. But the oversampling type can be changed too. And it's linear phase fear filters and polyphase IIR. And yeah, usually you would think that fear filters are like the best because they try to retain the face. So let's listen to this. And it sounds kind of thin now, not just because I'm smashing this sound with the fold back clipper. I mean also because of that, but not exclusively because of that. Let's try the polyphase IIR. which sounds much more natural on this kick layer. I know that IIR does mess with the face. I'm not sure if polyface does it a lot. I just know IIR in general does. And it doesn't matter if you select the anti-aliasing one or not. Sounds almost the same. It just sounds better than linear face in general. Just has a little, oh shit. My pizza is ready, I really have to hurry up with making this video. Ah, nice, I got the nice pizza. So where was I? Um, V-Clip. I mean, it's cool when you are hyped about different oversampling types and how they can affect the sound. 
but you have to be careful not to come to the conclusion that you have to get as much linear phase as possible. I know that a lot of people have such a mindset like you always have to work as clean as possible but that's really not how you should see these kind of features. In reality it is just you get different sounds and every time you run into a situation where it could matter you have to try all of these sounds before you really know what they sound like in that specific situation. And VClip lets you do that, which is cool. 